been a golfer, not a very good one, for, for over 50 years. I started off with uh, cut down hickory clubs and the small 1.62 golf ball. And since then, I've seen many, many innovations to the game. I've, I've seen uh, persimmon woods turn to, turn to metal. Steel shafts been replaced by, te- by titanium. Gore-Tex waterproofs, electric caddy cars, GPS golf trackers. Perhaps the most recent to come to join that party was the spikeless golf shoe. That is, until a couple of weeks ago, I saw a short video, um, which really made me sit up and take notice. Uh, Here was something that I could see becoming another mainstay um, on many, many golf courses for a long time to come. The contactless ball extractor captures the zeitgeist. It provides a solution to the COVID-19 problem of what to do for every golfer uh, touches during the course of the round, the flag stick. I'm delighted that the man behind the contactless ball extractor, James Buckhold, um, Managing Director of uh, BMS Products, has joined me for a quick chat. Oh, hi, Scott. For those of us who have not yet seen the contactless ball extractor, can you describe it to me? Uh, yes, of course. I mean, it's, uh, I actually have one with me at the moment, um, raring to go. But it's a device for, in effect, sliding over the top of the flag stick to allow the golf ball to be extracted out of the hole without actually contacting the flag stick, the hole or the surrounding area. So being able to lift this up with your putter uh, whilst the golf ball is, is sitting on the corner of the surface here, drives it out of the cup onto the green and uh, the player can pick it up safely, you know, a metre or two away from the whole location. And was it something that uh, came about due to the recent change in law, change in rules that allows the flag stick to remain in the hole? Or was it something purely and simply coming up with a solution to the, the COVID-19 issue? It was a combination of the two, really. Since the rule change uh, early in the year, uh, there's been several other companies that have created devices for lifting the flag stick with your hand so that you can retrieve the golf ball around waist height, not having to uh, uh, bend down and pick it up from inside the golf hole. Um, we, we hadn't done anything ourselves up until that point, but then we were in touch with a couple of local golf courses that know me quite well uh, and know what we do in so far as product design and, and production here and said, well, can you come up with something that's similar but allows the uh, member to retrieve the golf ball without touching anything? So we, uh, yeah, in our engineering facility here, we, we mocked up some prototypes. We took them to uh, Woburn Golf Course to start with, which is uh, actually quite local to where I live. Um, they field, field tested a couple of variations and quite quickly we got to a, a working prototype where they were, they were very happy. Um, and then we, we uh, put it into production almost straight away. What are the technical difficulties inherent in producing something like this? And um, what, what, what's, what was making the uh, production department, the, uh, the um, research and development department, scratch their heads? Uh, good question. I, mean, I suppose we're quite fortunate that we, we do cover R&D and engineering in-house here. So taking an idea from uh, literally a scratching on paper through to finished product is, is something that, that we're quite proud of having the ability to do. We don't rely on any other third parties. So. Um, with the small team that I have got here, there's, there's 25 of us and a selection of engineers. Um, uh, the, the two or three of us that were, that were floating around during the start of the corona lockdown were, were still, uh, you know, really saying, well, what, what can we produce during this time? Can we keep ourselves busy? Um, you know, can we get any of the staff back in to, to, just to basically keep people in a job? And uh, th- th- coming up with this idea helped greatly. So. Uh, fr- from a drawing to using some of the raw materials that we have in stock anyway, we were able to um, do some CAD modelling, do some drawings, then turn that into machinable parts on our lathe milling machine and so on here so that we could build a prototype, um, which we did very quickly. And that prototype uh, was what was used for testing. Um, first couple of iterations didn't work quite so well, so back to the drawing board literally the same day. And the following day, there was another, another version. Uh, so within the space of probably two or three days, we've gone from almost concept to finished product. Um, so that, that was the sort of speed of it. That's the benefit of having a small company. You can react so quickly to unusual circumstances. Absolutely. I mean, we're quite proud of the fact that um, we've brought a lot of the manufacturing back, back in-house. We're British manufacturing companies. We haven't got to you know, rely on some Far Eastern production facility that can 
you know, to try and communicate this. We did the whole lot uh, in house here. Yeah, so. Now, um, golf's a weird game. It's governed by the by the the rules. Um, yes. Have you been in contact with the RNA? Something new is they're going to they're going to have a view on it. Have you spoken to the RNA and what has their view been on the? Uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we 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 have been in contact with the RNA, and uh, there have been some discussions around uh, the, the the implementation of um, let's say uh, temporary uh, provisions for rule changes and things that allow people to make local rules based on similar devices. I mean, ours isn't the only one, uh, but whether people are putting golf hole cups upside down or, or other variations so people don't putt the ball. I mean, I think they're allowing uh, uh, golf courses to, to to make their own rules during these tough times at the moment. But what we've tried to create is something that can comply with the rules as near as possible. Um, and that, that includes things like uh, the ball drop distance being over three inches from, from surface, so it falls into the hole correctly, and also the distance of three inches above the surface, uh, this complies with that. It's also uh, just below 90 millimeters in diameter, so it, it still complies with the diameter of the, the flagstick rules, and it's made from a material that does not absorb the ball impact, so it, 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 it's solid rather than uh, cushioning. Mm -hmm. So all the little details like that that we've gone through as well to try and comply as best as possible, we've done. And what has the response been? I know you've been doing some testing at, at Woburn. What has the response been from not just the, the greenkeeping staff, but also from the, the golfers themselves? Uh, yeah, I mean, from, from my perspective, we only normally deal with the greenkeepers and course managers and people like that. But since we've put uh, a couple of uh, videos out on social media, it's been shared very, very widely throughout the golfing community as well. So we've been receiving a lot of uh, positive comments and people saying you know, similar to how you came across really is that it looks like a great gadget. Uh, this is an ideal way to get the game going again. And it, it, yeah, it's been quite positive. And what impact has it had on BMS products? How has it uh, impacted upon your working practices, your um, the weight of work you're having to carry out at the moment? Um, well, we've, um, we've had to bring in additional staff that may have been furloughed. So we've taken certain people back into the workforce uh, that are now here full time and we're even splitting the shift and doing 12, 14 hour days at the moment just simply wow. to keep up with the, keep up with the demand. Uh, I'm looking at <coughs> secondary machinery and equipment. Uh, we've got uh, raw material suppliers on board that are fairly local. So to try and um, uh, uh, combine all of the logistics of production from raw material through to getting it into our, our building, which has equally been challenging when courier companies have not been open themselves and, and you just can't get the bits. So we've had to physically drive to places ourselves to pick up uh, raw materials, to bring them in-house, to get them on the machine and, and, and really just keep the machining side and the production side running as long as we can. Uh, even myself, and we've been in on uh, Saturdays and Sundays at the moment, just just to try and accelerate the uh, the production process to to break the back of this. And that suggests there's already orders coming in from all over. Is that including there are. outside of the UK? Uh, yes, uh, it, it's 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 U UK predominantly at the moment, but um, we're getting a lot of interest from overseas uh, and the USA in particular now. Mm -hmm. There's one thing, one one thing, the name. I know it does what it says in the tin. But it doesn't mm. exactly trip off the tongue. Have you thought about calling it the Buckholt? Well, <laughs> I think my name's a bit awkward at the best of times. <laughs> but uh, it was it was actually uh, uh, through uh, another uh, good customer of ours, uh, Dale at Drayton Park. That we were we were just backwards and forwards uh, via WhatsApp. So what 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 should we call this thing? And and contactless ball extractor was was sort of the top of the list. Um, in effect, when we're uh, from a marketing point of view, we haven't pushed this. We haven't uh, really shouted about it too much. My speciality is on the engineering and production side. So uh, if, if anybody wants to think of a better name for it, I'm, I'm all ears. <laughs> well, I'm in for the buckhold. Okay. <laughs> Thank um, you very much. <laughs> of all the, all the products that you've come up with at the company, mm -hmm. where does this stand? Is this the one that you think has got the... the the biggest potential? Is this the one that shocked you the most as to how it's picked up and how the, what the reaction's been? Uh, yeah, it has been a shock. I mean, from, from my perspective, we deal with some quite technical projects from in general engineering, machining, manufacturing in metals, plastics, and all materials. And this 
this is a relatively simple product uh, in the grand scheme of things. But as they say, sometimes the best ideas can be the simplest ones. Um, uh, is it going to be a long term thing? Who knows? I think that's going to be a lot down to, um, as you say, whether the RNA get behind something like this or the rules change or, or whether just down this, this general safety lockdown period carries on for a long time. So I think we've got a product here that can perhaps at least run the rest of the year. Um, uh, but in parallel with this, we've still got our, our business to run. Um, we're still doing our general purpose tools and equipment and products and accessories. And they're starting to pick up again now as, as golf courses are starting to reopen and people get back to work. Um, so, but as, as, a, as a product, I'm quite proud of some of the other things we've done, which is uh, the iPro golf hole cutter and some of the other tools and accessories that, that have equally um, shown to be uh, quite popular over the last couple of years. <clears throat> Well, congratulations. I think it's a fantastic device, and I think it will be seen at many, many golf courses. And I can see it lasting beyond the, the length of um, the epidemic, the, the pandemic that we're in at the moment. So congratulations mm. once again, and thank you very much for giving Turf Matters a little bit of your time, James. I know obviously you're extremely busy, so, so thank you for that. And I hope Welcome. to bump into you in, in uh, reality rather than across the screen before too very Absolutely, long. Scott. Yeah, so thank, thank, you. You for making thank you for making contact.